Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our event. I'm Isas, uh, and uh, it is my pleasure to be the moderator for this uh, principle in implementing safety management system. Okay, so um, first of all, uh, um, we have uh, two panelists for today. So first one is Miss um, Low. Hi. Miss Lo, say hi. Okay. And then uh, another one out of our panelists is Mr. Muhammad Akmal. Hi, everybody. Okay. So now, um, um, say hi. Okay. Okay, so uh, I will briefly uh, introduce um, our speaker. Uh, so uh, first one is uh, Mr. Miss Lau uh, Xiaoju, and she is a quality and safety manager at Skyways Technic Asia, Sinjarin Bahai. And another one of our panelists is Mr. Muhammad Akmal bin Muhammad Yusof, and he is an air traffic controller at Kuala Lumpur Air Traffic Control Center. Uh, okay. So, um, can you guys uh, introduce yourself um, uh, about um, your career, about your um, passion in your work? Okay. So, first one, uh, we will start with uh, Miss Lu. Okay, so Miss Lu, can you um, introduce yourself? Uh, good morning. So, uh, okay, I graduated in UDC Science Malaysia as a, aeros a degree in aerospace engineering. Um, after that, I joined AROD as a quality inspector. So three years there, after that, I moved to uh, Eurocopter, which is now is called Airbus Helicopters. Spent eight years there in records, aircraft management, planning, and then I joined uh, BECAS. Uh, as a quality manager. Uh, after that, uh, I go forward to Hawker Pacific as a quality manager too. Then uh, uh, after that, I'm now end up in Skyway Technics as a quality and safety manager. So um, this is just a, a new role. I mean, how to say, a newly joined company. So just recent this year. So, uh, so you can see that I'm in quality um uh, how to say quality and safety fact, um how to say division for quite a long time so i'm still learning every day we still learning new things so i i can share i'm willing to share my uh, experience my knowledge but uh i'm not still not perfect so uh, hope to learn from everyone uh, from the seniors from the juniors also Thank you. Okay, so um, uh, I see. Okay, so um, do you really uh, enjoy uh, your work now, Miss Lu? If I can, can ask you uh, that question. Well, uh, yeah, I do enjoy. Of course, there's a very stressful, the workload, all that. But uh, the can work. Working in aviation actually is quite fun, challenging. Although it's very challenging, but um, meeting the aviation people is, I think it's totally different from, I never worked in other industry, but I'm, I'm glad that I'm in aviation. Uh, I will stay in aviation. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very passionate. Uh, want to continue in aviation no matter what so uh yeah i'm still happy with the seniors so that uh since era time they really uh brought me up in the they teach how, where we should uh, uh i mean point out the mistakes so that so um it's good to have a seniors to really um guide us hand by hand also of course they will like uh scolding or that but take it easily so aviation is fun so we we aviation people i'm sure that me and all the aviation people will will still love aviation so we want to come back to aviation industry thank you okay thank you miss lau okay so um uh, our second panelist so mr muhammad akmal so can you uh, introduce yourself 
Okay, can. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to uh, to Miss Lo, to uh, the panelists, Izaz and all the participants who is currently uh, streaming uh, this uh, live. Okay, uh, I graduated I graduated in uh, from Unique Elm also with a diploma in engineering technology in aeroplane maintenance. Currently working uh, with CAM uh, for eight years now, and um, I started back in 2013. But previously, I started uh, to work in aviation uh, with uh, smooth route aviation in uh, Taiko Hanger uh, in Subang Airport. And okay, um, since uh, then, I I. Since 2013, I I joined CAAM, and my first uh, my first station uh, was uh, Penang, and I am a uh, uh, Penang born actually. Uh, I I recently transferred to uh, KLATC Subang uh, last September actually, and um, uh, in uh, so for today I. I will be sharing my experience uh, mostly in uh, Penang because I was uh, in Penang for about six years, six to seven years. So most of my experience is uh, in Penang. So I, I hope that uh, my experience sharing in Penang will benefit all of us. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Mama Akmal. Okay, so um um so so for Mr. Akmal, so uh, the same question as Miss Lau. Do you enjoy your work now? Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, of course, I am enjoying my work as an air traffic controller. Uh, and um, in in uh, Penang air traffic control tower, I was uh, involved in uh, sms also but but not exactly a safety officer but just a uh, just a tiny pini committee of sms uh, but um alhamdulillah i gained some knowledge about sms and then um, as an traffic controller it um the, this career really uh opened my mind in aviation so uh i i really enjoy being an HIV controller. Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Akmal, for your introduction. So I hope um, everyone, uh, the audience, and also the panelists uh, had their breakfast today. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so, um, Okay, so for me, um, I learned um, aviation for, from my dad. So um, my dad is, um, um work as a technician uh, at mas so uh, i i always so before this i always follow him to when i was little I follow him to work so i see him um do um his work so um but i really uh so for this uh, topic today so the principle in implementing safety management system i only um learned a little bit from my lecture so i really uh, anticipating the topic for today okay so um can i um ask um, a question to the panelists so um, so the first question i want to ask miss lau so uh, as we know that safety is the most crucial thing in aviation so working as a quality and safety manager at skyways techniques asia syndrome berhad so can you explain to us what is your responsibility in making sure that safety management system in aviation is carried out well as outlined by the SMS manual? Okay. Um, to start with all this, let me introduce a bit about safety management system. Okay. So what is safety management system? So you can see from the slides, is a is a proactive especially the word is very important proactive way to implement uh, mitigating the safety risks and improve the safety performance another point is effective implementation leads to documented 
everything uh, do for safety management system have to be documented. It's a process-based approach to safety, as well as a better understanding of safety-related independencies and relationships. Next. Okay, why? Why we need a SMS in the aviation company especially? Okay, this is uh, enforced by the ICAO to for all the operators, air operators in ICO member states. Malaysia is a ICO member states. So must implement the SMS. This is uh, documented in ICAO Annex 19. The SMS can help in reduce of incidents and accidents. Reduce the direct and indirect costs, such as, uh, let's say, there's an incident, accident. So all this cost is a huge cost. So if we can spend money on safety, SMS, so the cost is less than the uh, paying the insurance, paying the medical for the, to, for the victim, for the aircraft, for the properties, for the damage of the anything, incident or accident happen. So, okay, another one is reducing insurance premiums, improve the staff productivity, and this is a safety recognition by the traveling public, and another proof of diligence in the event of legal or regulatory safety investigation. So, this is a, this is a key point why we need to implement the SMS. Next. Okay, can you, you can see that when the risk is higher, uh, we need to, we also will spend higher costs. So that's why we need to balance up the risk and cost. You can see the, um, how to say, the meeting point. We call it uh, allowed, as low as reasonable practical, practicable. So some of the risks are avoidable, but we need to, uh, reduce it, minimize it to a tolerable uh, level. So, and so that we won't, um, I mean, it balance to the cost that we spend, the effort, the resources we spend. So this is, uh, that is the main point to, for the SMS too. Next. And how, how to uh, implement this SMS? This is the strategies. First, the strategies is reactive. Reactive means that things that's already happened, which is past. So re, you respond to the events, anything accident happened, so you respond to it, corrective action to it, and then uh, make make correction er to the errors or that which is already happened. So this is not the good things, but there's no choice. You already happened, so you have to correct on it. The most important one is a proactive and predictive. So what is proactive? Proactive means that you actively identify the safety risk and the near misses. So in case uh, when in the in uh, while doing aircraft maintenance, when you find out that something is not right inside the what it during the maintenance task, so you you can see some of the near miss or any risk. So the staff should report it out to the safety manager or maybe the safety manager or maybe together with the safety committee they identify the uh some of the risks then they will mitigate the risk analyze it and mitigate it and so that to prevent the risk or reduce at least reduce the risk to happen to a bigger disaster predictive so what's predictive you future to you imagine imagination on analyze system processes and environment to identify the future problem what will the future happening future uh, errors that can happen so in, more on predict it predict on it next and this is a famous swiss cheese model which is always uh, i'm sure that during your human factor course or sms course you will always see this uh, model swiss cheese so when the Swiss cheese, when the holes of the cheese are all aligned, you can see the mishap, the disaster, the accident, the incident will happen. So we have to reduce it, the, all the failures. So you can have to identify all the latent failures. Latent failures means whatever that's uh, hidden, 
behind that we can identify, such as lack of safety culture, the poor equipment. So if you can identify the equipment is poor before the incident happens, so uh, you can avoid the accident. Identify the poor procedure, any poor design, the aircraft design, poor aircraft design, or any defective organization system. Okay, next. I'm sure that this is also a famous uh, photo. It's an iceberg. You can see the iceberg uh, at the top is a, just a small, tiny bit of it. But underneath of the ocean, you can see the iceberg is huge. And that's why uh, those ships pass by will uh, how to say, hit on it. And they, they, can't, they can't really uh, foresee what is happening that, uh, underneath of the ocean. So this is the similar things we will um, translate uh, relate to the aviation. When you have a lot of latent condition down there, let, let's say you can identify thousand or four thousand uh, latent conditions. You can see that the incident is getting less, less and less. So if you can control, um, mitigate the latent conditions. Let's say the thousand latent conditions you can reduce by ten, so uh, ten of it. So the incident will become uh, ten incidents, and then a serious incident from thirty you become three incidents only. And accident maybe you can avoid totally nothing. So that's why we have to identify the risk. Okay, next. Okay, still we are still in SMS. So SMS, the most important four pillars, uh, is very well known. Is in inside your syllabus. So the first is safety policies and objective, safety risk management, safety assurance, and safety promotion. So what's inside the components? You can see here. Inside safety policy and objective, we have. Uh, five components, management commitment, safety accountability, responsibilities, appointment of key safety personnel, uh, all this. And you can see total of 12 elements is inside the four components. This is a very, very important thing. This is a um, basic of the SMS, how to process it. Okay. Now I relate to the questions that is us uh, asking. Uh, as you can see that I'm a quality, I'm working as a quality and also as a safety. So I um, now want to relate a bit of quality management system versus safety management system. On quality management system, I mean, both of them are different objective. So you can see that QMS is more on customer satisfaction and focus on compliance, whether you comply with this requirement, this regulation, aviation authorities, um, some ISO or any uh, aerospace uh, regulations. So, but SMS is more on aviation safety focus and focus on risk. Identify the risk, uh, contain the risk and reduce the risk and so that to reduce the incident, accident and less cost. Both are similar processes. They have a similar processes such as uh, management review, data analysis, the corrective action and internal audit. So because of this, we can say that both are both can integrate, become one management system. Some company, uh, they integrate, become a aviation, they call it aviation safety management system, ASMS. But bear in mind, this QMS cannot conflict with SMS. So um, both are highly complementary and must work closely together to achieve the overall safety goals of aviation organization. So in, in aviation line, everythingness is very important. So both QMS and SMS really uh, assist to achieve the best everythingness condition. Next. As a safety manager, the responsibility is outlined here. So the main role is implementation and maintenance of SMS. So as we know, we must manage the implementation plan, perform the hierarchy, uh, hazard identification and risk management, 
monitor the actions and evaluate uh, how's the performance, how's the results of it. Um, doing the periodic reports, maintain the SMS documentation and reports, plan the safety training. So organize the safety training uh, from outsiders to train the internal staff. Uh, this internal staff is means that the whole company's staff include from the accountable manager to the to the even the let's say the lower staff lower level staff also must be trained uh, must we have a basic uh, knowledge on SMS. Uh, we give an independent advice on safety managers to the management too. Account, I mean the management we call it accountable executive. Uh, the managers on safety management matters do the investigation and coordinate and communicate with the local authority and uh, state authorities, local authorities like CAM. So we need to liaise with them uh, how our company SMS uh, focus on it and have to submit the safety performance indicator every, every year and inform what is our status in case of any accident, incident happen, must uh, sub, um how to say, have to submit the mandatory uh, occurrence reporting to them. Next. Well, this is a challenge as a safety manager. So we must have a skill set of safety manager, such as uh, keep up to date on the SMS requirements. So there is a new, uh, newly issued, uh, CAM newly issued requirement, SMS requirements, we call CAD19, safety management recently in, I think first May, so we have to work closely with the authorities and ability on manage the SMS data, develop the HI risk, hazard identification risk management. This is the most uh, challenging part of it. And also the safety culture of the company. So if the safety culture of the company is not really well promoted, uh, everyone don't have a safety mindset, so they will not bother about safety and they take it for granted. So that's why we we must ensure that management have to commit to it and also the, the whole level, the all levels of the organization must commit into the this culture. Next. Um, and also, um, I can say that most companies, they have a very poor reporting culture because they're worried about being being penalized if they report something. Let's say they, they found out some near misses or maybe they found out that they did uh, mistakes by themselves. They, they are not willing to uh, step forward to report it. But we must um, cultivate the culture that there is a just culture reporting, a voluntary reporting, which is no, uh, no, no penalized, no punishing if the if the errors is not a uh, violating the errors. So we must um, ensure this atmosphere is uh, in the safety culture of the company. And safety awareness. So how to gain the safety awareness in the company is more on training, the promotion of it. Uh, yeah, I think that's all for question number one. Okay thank, you. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Ms. Lau. So now um, I know that actually we just see uh, from uh, like before this, we can see that simply uh, the responsibility. But now uh, I, like, I can see that we actually have a lot of responsibility because um, yeah, because um, safety is the number one, right? So uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Lau, for uh, answering uh, my question. So so now um, I want to ask uh, Mr. Akmal. So hazard identification uh, and uh, mitigating subsequent risk is one of the elements in safety risk management. From your experience, can you share with us uh, the process of hazard identification and how do you mitigate the risk? Okay. Um, first of all, like I mentioned earlier, I will be sharing uh, my experience in Penang because I I was uh, working in Penang as traffic control tower for for quite a long time. Okay, 
um, from the question uh, to share with uh, the floor the process of hazard identification and how do you mitigate the risk okay and first of all uh, hazard identification uh, of course um, in Penang we also establish uh, an SMS team uh, led by the safety officer uh, of CAM Penang and um, most of the hazard identification usually will be made by 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 the safety officer or the uh, safety assessment team but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, other ATCOs, other air traffic controllers cannot uh, contribute in identifying hazard. Uh, if there's any hazard that they identify, they can uh, report to the safety officer or the, uh, the SMS team so that uh, the team will take note and uh they will uh, sit down and they will uh, they will they will discuss on it and how to mitigate the risk uh, as an example um, uh, i cannot share but uh, i mean that uh, i can share but uh, i i did not manage to give uh, this document to the to to, to, the, to the, the committee as an example uh, it is a simple uh, it is a simple hazard actually a tree blocking the view of uh, the air traffic control uh, at the tower okay uh, that's a from my experience there is a large tree actually uh, blocking the view of uh, end of runway 22 we call it holding point runway 22 uh, Penang have uh, what uh, single runway which is runway 04 and runway 22 uh, okay uh, follow me uh, let's uh, put yourself at the control tower and you are uh, uh, in front of you is the runway uh, your right side is runway 04 and your left hand side is uh, runway 22 so the tree is uh, blocking your right, uh, your left view towards hold it towards uh, runway 22 so uh, most of the uh, traffic controller at Penang Tower uh, identified this as a hazard because they cannot see aircraft approaching holding point runway 22 or either aircraft vacating the runway uh, and come and uh, taxing towards uh, the taxing towards the terminal so this is a uh, this is a hazard that they found and um, and of course they, they, they reported this to uh, to, to, to the uh, SMS team and they managed to come up with a, with a safety risk assess assessment SRA uh, this uh, I believe this SRA is uh, being uh, compiled either this year or last year and of course uh, once this SRA is uh, is constructed they will they will inform and they will consult uh, the CEM manager uh, to verify this uh, SRA safety risk uh, assessment uh, before they can uh, proceed uh, this uh, document to uh, our higher ups in HQ and to the relevant part, uh, parties to 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 mitigate to solve this uh, problem. So this the relevant party involved is uh, uh, Malaysia Airports because it falls under the main maintenance and management of the Malaysia Airports. Uh, I am not sure whether this is uh, already been uh, uh, settled or not but uh, what i can share here is the flow of uh, hazard identification and how to mitigate the risk but of course uh, the mitigating uh, uh, the mitigating process is uh, does not fall under air traffic control because um, 
we heard we don't have the power to to go and cut down a tree uh it falls under the malaysia uh, malaysia airport team what we what we did was only uh um compile a, a black and white document which is the sra to be to be brought up to the higher up level uh, like uh, cmhq and also the malaysia airport team so that uh the next step is up to them what what will they do but i believe i i i don't know uh, how 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 true is it but i believe the um uh the 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 hazard is still there and of course uh atc uh has to find a way another way to uh to to work with the uh hazard with the hazard uh, and uh, but i believe uh in time with the uh with the all those uh projects coming in i believe uh, the hazard will be will be will be uh settled soon okay thank you okay thank you uh mr akmal so uh now uh, i can see um now uh, i all know so now i know how um you guys uh, identify the uh, risk okay so uh, thank you uh miss lau and mr akmal for uh, answering uh, the first question okay so for the audience um uh, in this live so uh, after this uh later we will have a q and a q and a session so if you guys want to uh, ask uh, the question to the uh, speakers or to uh, our so you can leave it uh, in the comment section so we we'll, uh, we will read it later so um okay and then uh, okay now i will uh, move on to the um, second question okay uh, to miss lau uh, to implement safety management system, the very first thing that we need to do is, of course, to establish the basic plan and assignment of responsibilities. So, can you share with us what is the implementation plan for aviation safety management system? Okay, now we go to the slide. Okay, you can see that um, the first to implement the SMS, you must have an initial gap analysis, find out what is missing in the organization system. So do the gap analysis. This is a checklist to compare the service providers, means that the aviation organization, the assisting the safety management processes that they are having, compare with the SMS requirements that's dictated by the uh, aviation authorities. After you get the gap analysis, you will have a more detailed gap analysis uh, to zoom in and the implementation task. Then only you can perform the SMS implementation schedule. Next. Next slide. Okay, so you can see that as per the first step, you have to do the gap analysis. This is a checklist is already uh, displayed already pro, uh, provided in by the authorities is a similar to all the authorities. So the first is, they will still go back to the four components, 12 elements. So the four components, the first component will be the safety policy and objective. This is example. Is there a safety policy in place? So once you look at the first questions, so if you check that, okay, I have the safety policy, but uh, the the content of the safety policy is incomplete compared to the requirements that the authorities required. So you can mention we answer it as a partial. Then we go to the refer to the step two, the table number two. Next page. Then we zoom into the problem. We uh, fill up this form, this uh, chart. Uh, okay, the distribution of gap is the existence safety policies addresses only OSHAs, means it's more occupational, not relate, not enough for the aviation safety management system. Then we pick up 
what is the action to be required to fill up this gap. We enhance the existing safety policy to include the aviation objective and the policies and develop a, or maybe develop a separate aviation safety policy. So it's, uh, it will be under discussion together with the safety committee to have a separate policy or uh, how to say combination of the OSHAs and the aviation SMS. Another action is have the safety policy approved and signed by the accountable executive. This is a requirement. This has to be endorsed by the accountable executive, then only uh, circulate to the floors. Then we will assign who is a group that to, or maybe you can have a task group. If a company is too small, you can mention about who is a PIC person in charge of this task. So he, she will uh, gather the information, I mean, draft out the policy, uh, display it during the safety committee, everyone agree with it, then the safety committee meeting, I mean, or we call it safety review board, is uh, chaired by the accountable executive. So everyone agree with it. Okay, then the accountable executive will sign on it and date it. And then it will be published in the manuals and also display in the uh, company. Uh, one of the war or something like that. So it's a more, this is, we'll go back to safety promotion. So this is the detail of the uh, missing, the gap, lah, fill up the gap of the, the task. Next, after this, this is a step three. So each of the action, we will zoom in more, put in the target deadline, timeline for when we can complete the task, each of the tasks. So after the task is completed, then we can mention the state of it to be closed. So this is a detail of the from the step one until step three, how to implement the plan. So I think that's all for maybe I can I do I answer your question? <laughs> uh, yes, Miss Lau. Uh, so uh, that is uh, an interesting um, plan. So, um, okay, so uh, I will ask a question to Mr. Akmal. So, safety assurance is important in order to determine whether the safety management system is operating as expected or not. In your opinion, uh, what can be done in order to ensure that safety management system is always operating as per SMS manual? Okay. Uh, okay, from the question, what can be done in order to ensure the safety management system is always operating as per SMS manual? Okay. Uh, like what I saw in Ms. Lowe's slide, safety promotion. I believe uh, safety promotion is uh, one of the, the, the activities or the elements that can be done to ensure that the uh, the safety the sms is operating as per the manual um uh, sometimes most of the uh the the, the workers the, the staffs like like my like my field the air traffic controllers they are not very aware of uh the uh, the, the safety the sms so um i believe with uh, a good safety promotion carried out by by the sms team uh, it will somehow provide a good knowledge a good understanding on what is sms and what is the role of every air traffic controller in 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 contributing to uh, in contributing to 
making sure that the SMS works uh, as per SMS manual. And um, like I said, you know, the uh, safety promotion is a uh, is uh, is a very important uh, element to 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 promote safety to 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 the floor to the workers to the staffs and um, uh, I hope that answer your question uh, is us. Uh, yes. Um, now um, we uh, we can see that actually every parts of uh, workers that uh, actually um, have a big role to make uh, to follow the uh, safety as uh, uh, as uh, to uh, to maintain the safety. So and then um, uh, I forgot to mention that um, the students that uh, in the live session you can screenshot the. Um, uh, the live and, and we will uh, put the GHOX form at the end of the live session. Okay, so now um, we will uh, read some question um, on the uh, comments. Okay, so it is from Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. So uh, for now, uh, I will ask um, another question uh, to the panelists. Uh, we will um, do the Q and A session after um, the next um, after the next round. Okay. So um, I will ask the question to Miss Lau. So um, based on the Murphy's law, it is said that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So, from your opinion, do you agree with that statement? Agree with anything that can go wrong will go wrong, because we must even not in the aviation line, even in our our life in the living. So we must expect the unexpected. So be prepared of what and when it will go wrong. So still go back to the SMS strategies, <laughs> proactive and predictive. So we must get ready what is going to happen soon. So we maybe we can relate to our current our current war with the COVID-19. So we must expect <laughs> unexpected because this is the COVID-19 virus is an invisible war to the whole nation so we must be prepared proactive go and get the vaccine or something like that so that's why it go back to sms so we must be proactive to identify the risk as much risk as possible the risk is a live that document the high a HIRM is a live document, live data. So every day, whoever, all the levels in the organization identify any risk, report to us, and we will, um, how to say, we will mention in the data and then discuss in the committee, analyze it and action on it. If it's, um, how to say, the, uh, rigid. So that's why it's very important. We the risks have to be identified, the hazard have to be identified to mitigate, I mean, the action on it and then mitigate the incident and accident. So go back to safety, everythingness is very important. That's all. Okay, thank you, Miss Lau. Okay, so now uh, uh, I just remember what I learned uh, in my human factors uh, studies. So uh, yeah, everything uh, that we learned actually related to the uh, workplace. Okay, so now I will ask uh, Mr. Akmal. Okay, uh, as aviation safety is one of the most important elements in aviation industry, of course, we need to always maintain a positive safety culture in the working environment. And I believe this can be done under safety promotion. 
Okay, so can you tell us a little bit what is the key element in order to improve the safety management system in aviation? Okay, um, uh, to answer the question, um, safety in air traffic control is not about um, it's not about I mean uh, it is still about uh, to work uh, safely to have a safe working culture uh, of course in aviation aircraft maintenance uh, the safety uh, the safety culture is to provide any accidents or uh, near misses incidents uh, involving uh, equipments uh, the personnel and uh, same goes to air traffic control um, safety culture safety working culture is uh, uh, is uh, established to provide uh, a safe uh, working culture for air traffic controllers okay let's say air traffic control let's say uh, the one of the air traffic controller give a single uh, wrong instruction uh, to pilots and of, if the pilot uh, blindly follow the instruction uh, definitely it, accidents will it will happen so um uh, as for cam safety unit in hq uh, they will sometimes provide us with a safety bulletin on the safe uh, radio te telephony technique and why does the uh, the what is the importance of maintaining uh a good radio telephony techniques what is the importance in maintaining a proper uh, phraseology not bahasa kampung what we call um, so safety in air traffic control is uh, more to that particular uh, field in uh, ways how to how to uh, talk to the pilots uh, what are the instruction to be given to the pilots and uh, because uh, like all of us know uh, pilots will only listen to air traffic control because we are the only one uh, guiding them uh, we are the eye for them so um, they will definitely believe us and um, that is why we need to maintain a proper RT technique proper uh, in accordance with all the manuals so that uh, we can prevent accidents and near misses or incidents uh, and uh, that is what we need to uh, impose or we need to promote to air traffic controllers uh, to not to use plain language I mean that we use plain language plain English language but um uh for the sake of safety and uh it is better for us to follow the iko's uh radio telephony recommendation so that um we ourselves can prevent uh any safety uh incidents any accidents occur so um I believe uh, to how to improve safety management system is uh, will I believe uh, we need to start from the bottom from the floor. Uh, we like what Miss Lo uh, has um, uh, has shared just now. Safety promotion. Safety promotion is uh, a very important key element to make sure uh, all. Um, personnel working in aviation either in aircraft maintenance in piloting in air traffic control everything as long as you are uh, an aviation personnel um, safety will uh, need to be the utmost uh, element to uh, uh, 
uh, the need to be the most uh, important element to to be to in ourselves to so that we can work safely not only to ourselves to our our colleagues also okay i hope uh, that answer the answers the question is us yeah, um, uh, so can you give a little bit of example what you say about the plain language? I was, I want to know a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, plain language. I mean, uh, of course, there is uh, standard phraseology. Let's say, um, let's say, um, aircraft, um, aircraft ground, uh, aircraft. Uh, Maintenance personnel requesting for engine ground run. Uh, okay, let's say um, engineers will uh, we'll call uh, uh, ground, pinning ground. This is uh, Alpha Bravo Chali requesting engine ground run at idle power for about one zero minutes. So the, the pilot will have, no, sorry, the ATC will have to use proper uh, standard phraseology to give instruction to the uh, to the engineer. Okay, then I'm Alpha Bro Shali, engine ground run approved for one zero minutes. Uh, Kionish uh, one zero one zero report completed. That is the standard phraseology. Uh, plain language means that um, okay, then I'm Alpha Bro Shali, you are permitted to do engine ground run procedure for uh, the next uh, ten minutes. Uh, report again when you are uh, fully completed. Uh, doing uh, your activity. Um, you see, plain language is uh, longer than longer than phraseology. That is why we have standard phraseology so that uh, we need to keep it precise, uh, short and precise, but the information still be delivered. Okay, uh, something like that. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Akmal. Okay, so uh, now I, uh, I see and I understand. Okay, uh, okay now uh, we will move on to the Q&A session. Okay, so first uh, I will read the question or comment session. And first question is from Muhammad Iqbal Soleh. So, morning all. Miss Lau, during the risk mitigation plan, some costs may be incurred in order to perform the mitigation action. How do you justify or your approach to your top management or accountable executive that the mitigation plan will benefit the cost of operation? Thanks. For this question, so of course, um, from my side, we need to justify that um, whether the risk is it uh, uh, significant then only we we see um, what is the we will list out what is the um, options of the mitigation plan for this risk so find out what is the cost it will be and um, then uh, how to say analyze it and then display it to the top management but actually not only for the top manager is a safety management system is for the whole company is the involvement of for the whole company so we will have a safety committee meeting uh, we, or we call it a safety review board meeting so discuss it uh, and agree with the how to mitigate the risk so of course most some of the risk to mitigate the, I mean, some of the plan, some of the action to mitigate the risk if high cost. So, but we have to, that's why go still go back to the uh, ALAP, uh, accept, I mean, acceptable, I mean, at least to the acceptable practical level of the, how to reduce the risk and also balance up with the cost. Then, um, with the, of course, some of the risks are the cost is very high but we have to explain to the management uh if we don't reduce the risk the cost will be high uh if we don't reduce the risk with this mitigation plan this cost if if the real accident incident happen eventually at the end will incur a higher cost which is a uh, more loss to the company in is a is a 
maybe a total loss or not only loss on the monetary, we will lose the reputation of the company, we will maybe lose life or the property, um, customer not willing to send any more, uh, not willing to come back to us anymore because uh, because of the incident happened is so bad. So this the eventually the the how to say the consequences is higher than the cost uh the initial cost that we uh put in to mitigate the risk. So of course we need to show some proven data and some uh, plan to it. Then I answer the question. <laughs> yeah, for me, uh, yeah, I can see. Um, uh, I can understand you from the question. So, and then uh, next question from Hayati Mokta: How are accidents at the workplace prevented? Okay. Um. So okay to answer uh, the question from Hayati Mota, how are accidents at the workplace prevented? Um. Of course, the establishment. Um. Uh, like like Miss like Murphy's law, accidents will occur if 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 it wants to. Uh, if it wants to occur, but how to prevent is um, of course the establishment of SMS team, SMS, uh, safety risk assessment and uh, everything about SMS as per uh, IKO uh, NX19. Uh, but it is what you call, it is only on paper. But how to uh, prevent, uh, how to practically prevent accidents happen at the workplace, accidents or incident, is to uh, observe, uh, is to go back to our working manual like aircraft maintenance manual like us, um, manual of air traffic service. Uh, just follow uh, strictly to the manual so that, uh, of course, there is there is a reason why manuals are, are being uh, established so that we can follow uh, follow the, uh, the, the process. Uh, of course, uh, in the end, uh, to prevent any accidents or a incident occurring at workplace. So uh, to answer this question, I believe um, the floor, the 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 personnel themselves uh, need to have a very uh, deep understanding on um, safety uh, themselves. So in order to do that. Uh, it falls under the SMS team to promote safety to the uh, to the floor to the personnel involved. I hope it answers the question. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, I can uh, I, I can see that you, uh, you answer the question. Okay, so now we move on to the next question from Izian Izati Zairi. Uh, the question is for Ms. Lau. Uh, working in aviation industry, how will you improve risk awareness in SMS among workers? Okay, good question. So, this go back to safety promotion. One of the uh, key components, the last pillar of the SMS framework, safety promotion. So, inside the safety promotion, we have to have training and education and also the last one is safety communication so training yes so for sms training is we have to cover the all levels of the organization of course not not all the level have the same syllabus of the sms so we have to be selective uh, appropriate to the to their uh, level of understanding so we have to make customize to certain certain trainings like or for safety manager the their sms training will be uh, more in intensive so it's more on like how to implement the sms or that so for some other uh, workers some technicians or engineers they maybe just need to cover the understanding of why the sms have to be implemented in the company and then why 
their contribution uh, is important, especially the voluntary reporting. Um, yeah, yeah, any near misses, they should report it. So if they don't report it, so it will, the consequence might uh, impact to them because it will be uh, affect them in their working culture. So, and with the training and education, so we can more uh, cultivate more safety culture in the company. Uh, on safety communication, maybe we can go for safety poster, display some safety poster uh, throughout the companies, some uh, safety awareness, some like certain certain workshop, we need to wear some uh, proper PPE. Uh, pro PPE means uh, personal protective equipment. So we need to wear uh, proper safety shoes. The which room need to wear a respirator a mask, um, a glove when they're handling some chemicals, some hazardous hand, uh, chemicals. Uh, talking about chemicals, um, some schedule waste chemicals would have to be well uh, collected and uh, segregated in the proper area, proper ventilated area. And it will be, we have to arrange with the Department of Environment of Malaysia to uh, they have the licensed collection service provider. They will come and collect it so that this is to also reduce the risk of any fire risk or any pollution risk to the environment. So, and last, we can maybe in the company, we can organize some safety campaign. So whoever have some safety suggestion, uh, maybe put in the suggestion box, whoever have a, good suggestion so we can give some incentive or award and maybe announce in the in one of the uh, event of the company so it's like more it's promote the safety is important for everyone for the organization so that's all okay thank you miss lao so uh, the conclusion uh, is uh, maybe we can do some workshop practices and uh, maybe do some campaign. Am I right, uh, Miss Lau? Yes. So, uh, okay, now uh, I will move on to the next question. Um, okay, from Izian Izati Zairi. So, if the SMS in some organization is carried out well, in your opinion, will there still be accidents occurring? Accidents, incidents, near misses will still happen. Uh, we cannot hundred uh, percent. Uh, we cannot hundred uh, percent stop accidents or incidents from happening. But uh, that is why we establish SMS so that we can reduce the number of accidents and incidents from occurring. Uh, how SMS reduce is from uh, is from uh, giving safety awareness to the to the to the uh, personnel working uh, and from the awareness uh, of uh, working safe, safety working culture it may help or it may lead to in the reduction of uh, uh, accidents or incidents and uh, of course uh, like i like i mentioned just now um accidents or incidents will still happen even though the sms is very well established uh, in any organization uh, okay i hope that answers the question from izian izati Okay, so we can see that actually anything, uh, we, uh, actually um, uh, there will be risk everywhere. Okay, so we have to be um, alert and follow the rules so we can reduce the risk um, of the accidents that will be occurred. 
Okay, so do we have some next question? Uh, other question? Okay, so from uh, Izan Uh So why do we need SMS in aviation industry? Well, uh, I did mention in one of the slides. So this is a requirement by the ICAO for all the aviation industries, uh, all the aviation operators in the in their states, in their ICAO member states, which Malaysia is one of the ICAO member states. So we have to comply to the SMS requirement, which is mentioned in the Annex 19. So this is a requirement, we have to comply it. And of course, this is uh, SMS is important to cover the property, the human, and the organization. That's all. Is it answer? <laughs> ah, yes, so uh, yeah, we actually um, need this for um, safety purpose. Uh, okay, so next question is from Yana Amira. How will the effectiveness of an organization's SMS be assessed? Uh, okay, to answer this question, how will the effectiveness of an organization's SMS be assessed? Effectiveness of uh, an organization's SMS. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, the appointment of the assist the safety officer and the SMS team. Uh, to me, also plays. Uh, uh, an important role uh, to how how in how to uh, to, to, to 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 establish a, uh, an effective SMS organization because uh, a safety officer and SMS team plays a very important role uh, to 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 like I said to to identify hazard to mitigate risk and to 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 promote safety culture to other personnel so if they if they if the safety officer and the sms team doesn't work well does uh, doesn't have any what do you say uh, doesn't have any um uh, doesn't have any interest in uh, safety or sms i don't think um the the sms uh, in some one's organization will be uh, effective enough so uh, safety officer and sms team and also the accountable manager like uh, cem pinang uh, manager is uh, uh, the one who needs to play the role to how uh, to make an uh, sms team uh, in an organization uh, be very effective of course, uh, later on, it will fall to the the uh, to other personnel working. Uh, they also contribute in uh, in in the effectiveness of the SMS. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for uh, all the question that the audience gave. So um, now I think um, we are close to the end of the session. But before that, uh, maybe um, uh, either Miss Lau or Mr. Akmar can give um, some advice to the audience or maybe you can share a little bit experience that um, um, you guys have uh, maybe like workmates uh, do some race so how do you um like how do you uh what do you say like how like what do you do uh, or um yeah maybe um uh, give some um story or maybe give some um advice to the audience okay so maybe um so we start with this now okay. okay can show the slides so I enforce, I mean, enhance on the safety promotion. So how is the safety promotion being carried out throughout the company? Can be done by training, um, communication. So it have to be a two-way communication. So we have to get the, um, 
get the feedback from the from the flaws from the other personals even even from a even from the company's cleaner so it, maybe they can identify some of the risks some of the safety risks they can report to me and then we can uh, mitigate to it how to uh, enhance their working environment based on some events we learn some learn the mistakes do some post-mortem of the previous events and also we can have some campaign safety campaign like just now i mentioned some publication share out some publication to the to the companies uh by visible or by email or by maybe by whatsapp because a lot of people are using whatsapp groups so share any safety information to them any safety accident that happened in other country other companies so with them the case and some case studies and some post performance indicators that maybe how many accident rate uh how many accident throughout the month and maybe this month is no accident so it's like a that more on visible okay next slide i would like to inform that safety is the key to accident free without safety we can't go further so everyone have to uh have the safety culture in ourselves even at home or not only in the organization so we have to improve on our safety culture next so safety begins with teamwork so everyone must have their contribution. SMS is not only safety manager work, uh, accountable executive work is the whole throughout the whole company. Everyone must contribute their feedback, their discussion, their suggestion, or uh, anything that can be good for the company safety and. If the company work well on the safety, means that the company profit will be eventually uh, become better. Another, this is all the pro pro uh, poster. So we never take shortcuts to our safety, not even a second. So even on some of the procedures, some of the aircraft maintenance procedures, there's no shortcut allowed. So if we go back to the human factor if you continue with the one of the 30 dozen uh, the norm so you will uh, you thought that okay i every time doing the preliminary inspection so i'm okay with it so i don't need to refer to the manuals i use my brain my memories i always i i've been doing this for many years already I'm, i know what i'm doing so refuse to use the manuals this is a uh, uh not the correct procedures so because the manuals can be at why uh, can be revised in any time so in aviation industry maintenance data means that the maintenance manual or that have to be referred at all times uh we cannot base on our memories next with this thing of sms you have to think of all this the strategy, the planning, policies, the manuals, the hazard identification, and the risk management. Next. Uh, this is a video. Okay. So this is a reference that uh I uh that everyone can look into the ICAO guidance material and especially the CAM latest uh, safety management system uh, materials. Last but not least, um, please do not compromise on safety, especially in aviation industry. I think that's all from me. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much, Ms. Lau. So, uh, uh, 
so your conclusion is that um everyone is um need to contribute to the safety and maybe some small things that we can see that uh that we think that we have experience and we just keep some steps small step that we can see but actually it's important to reduce the accidents and maybe yes. we can um uh, spread the safety maybe we can like um spread the safety uh, culture uh, among ourselves okay so uh, thank you miss lau okay so now uh, mr akmal so do you have any advice to the audience okay actually i uh, totally agree with miss uh, low on uh, what she shared just now um uh aviation personnel uh works closely with safety so without the without the uh thorough awareness of safety in aviation i believe um i believe uh aviation industry in malaysia um would be uh, as good as now actually uh, safety starts from all of us uh, in fact even uh, from uh, like Miss Lo said from the clip from the cleaner in fact uh, even MIAT students can start to uh, to to have a, a deep and thorough awareness of safety in aviation uh, of, of course not only innovation everything that we do involves safety so i believe um, i believe uh, uh, safety culture starts with us actually the uh, we don't expect don't only uh, you don't have to wait uh, for the safety managers to 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 come up with a safety promotion only that we follow no we don't have to wait for that we just um, uh, we just uh, uh, we need to have in ourselves that uh, we are contributing to a bigger part uh, in aviation um, uh, purposely in safety mm, I think that's all that I can uh, share with you thank you Okay, so thank you so uh, so thank you so much, uh, Miss Lau and Mr Akmal, for the advice that given. Okay, so um the uh, so thank you, uh, Miss Lau, for uh, your um uh, sharing and also uh, Mr Akmal too. And then uh, the people that um uh, ask questions that we can't read um uh, on live the question. So uh, after this, the speakers will um, reply to your question in the um, comment section. Okay, so now uh, we will have um, Miss Lau uh, provide us with some videos. Uh, so uh, we will um, end this live with a um, video from Miss Lau. Okay, so thank you uh, so much everyone and um, um, the GHOCS form uh, will be provided in the comment section. Uh, and thank you, uh, Ms. Lau again and Mr. Akmatu. And yeah, so um, have a good day, everyone. And thank you so much. So, bye. <laughs> bye, Ms. Lau and Ms. Akmal. And bye, uh, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, thank you very much. I really happy to share my whatever knowledge here. <laughs> nice to be with you all. Thanks. Okay, so uh, again, uh, sorry for uh, if we have some lacking. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Thank oh, it's doing very well. Thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Right. Bye. Meet Sam. Sam's a med service employee, and today she's going to help explain a new system for managing safety at med service, underpinned by a just culture. The world is full of things that could go wrong at any time, 
and safety management is about how we catch those things before they trip us up. At work, gravity and untidy cables may conspire against you. Or perhaps a slippery floor plots your demise. But what about the things that affect the quality and safe delivery of service to our customers? Risks to our reputation or our bottom line? By proactively identifying hazards in our workplace, we can better prevent them getting in the way of success. For example, successful provision of forecasts to our customers and our people successfully getting through each day at work. To help us understand how we identify different types of hazards, let's now talk about molasses. In Boston City in the year 1919, a 15-meter tall tank of molasses collapsed sending a viscous tidal wave two stories high through a busy urban area, killing 21 people. How could this have happened? To help us with this question, we now move to cheese. Layers of defense in any system can be thought of as slices of Swiss cheese. The defenses in the molasses tank system were full of holes indeed. There was a lack of engineering expertise in the design of the tank. The building process was substandard with the builder unable to read blueprints. The construction was rushed. The safety testing dropped so the deadline could be met. Warnings from the public of the tank creaking and rumbling were ignored, with the tank painted brown to hide the leaking molasses. When the holes were lined up, catastrophe. We may not deal in molasses at Met Service, but we can learn from this event. We provide a service that is critical to the safety of human life and property, with the systems that deliver the service potentially having holes. It has been said that human error is the downside of having a brain. We cannot escape it, so we must plan for it. When human factors such as situational awareness or distraction are considered, those potential holes in our system become even more visible and, if seen, need to be reported. The sorts of hazards that could be reported are those that affect the health, safety and well-being of our staff and visitors, or those that affect our property. And then there are hazards, those that affect our business processes. It's a forecasting monitoring tool that stops working at the end of each month. It's the out-of-date documentation for a critical business tool. It could be the unmonitored Met Service email address to which a service provider sends an invoice. Staff are encouraged to self-report incidents arising from a genuine mistake without fear of getting into trouble. In fact, they will be recognized as demonstrating individual responsibility and that they take ownership of their actions. This is just culture. By investigating the root causes of these incidents, we find where the holes in our defenses lie, and then efforts can be made to prevent a similar mistake happening in the future. A commitment to just culture is made in our safety policy, which outlines how we will ensure safety is at the heart of all we do. So, people of MetService, this is where you come in. By looking out for each other and looking out for our company, we can make MetService an even better place to work. We will improve and enhance MetService's reputation as a great innovative company that has the safety of its staff and customers at heart. To learn more about making a safety report and just culture, as well as exploring other safety management resources, check out the SAM space on Confluence and stay tuned for more from SAM in the future.